Okay guys, it's Richie from Fred Junkies and if you're new here, um, this video is about the title, how to make a backing track in GarageBand. Uh, I had this requested recently from Isaac. Uh, thanks for the request. And this has actually come in quite a few times. And it's probably something I've overlooked. I've never really shot this kind of video before. So there's gonna be a few hiccups along the way. It's gonna be more about the information than the production. Um, but I'm gonna take you right through it from start to finish, how we get to basically the end product from from the very from, from right from the start um, so there's a couple of ways and a couple of things I found out that really work really well um, but we'll begin at the start as I said usually where it'll come from I'll be sat and I'll be playing I'll either find some inspiration somewhere um, and I won't be able to find a backing track of that song but I really like the the you know the progression um, so I'll kind of doctor it a little bit and make it kind of more my own. Uh, I'll find something that I like, some pretty chords and... Something like that, um, and I like that. And wh where I used to get stuck was um, how I would take that into garage pan and how I would get the time in and everything to work for it, with it, which is which is actually really a simple procedure. Um, but I'll show you that shortly. The first one we do is we mic the cab. Okay, uh, mic in the cab is completely down to you. However, you want to mic the cab with whatever mic you want to do, uh, or you. Sorry, the, the most important thing is getting a good, nice signal in. So we'll take the signal from the microphone up into the audio interface. I use an Apogee Jue, and then we'll take that straight into GarageBand. From GarageBand, we'll choose there. Now, if you're using the Phantom Power thing, you need to make sure you've got that selected, um, and then we'll take that straight in. Okay, and then we've got we've got a signal straight into GarageBand, and that's how we begin. Okay, so coming back to the acoustic, when I first started, I, I always struggled getting a drummer with it, and um, there were, there's a there's an option in GarageBand that shows you how to uh, syncopate a drummer with with what you're playing. But what I didn't realize is I had to have the BPM bang on for that drummer to work. So there's a real quick hack hack method I I I kind of developed. Um, and there's probably another easier way to do it, but this is just the way that works for me. So if I've got the progression playing, uh, I'll tap out the beat with my foot, right? And as soon as my beat, as soon as my foot has found the beat, then what I'll do is I'll bring my phone over. I've got the beat now. One, two, three, four. I'll bring my phone phone over, hit the stopwatch on my phone for 15 seconds. Counting how many beats I'm hitting in that 15 seconds. So, one, two, three, four. And I'll go all the way to 15 seconds, count how many beats I've got, and I'll times that by four. And that roughly gives me my BPM, okay? So if we had 15 beats in the 15 seconds, we got 60 BPM, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, So what we'll do now is we'll go straight into GarageBand, and I'll show you exactly how we do that, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll I'll play this progression. We'll mic the mic the amp up, and we'll take it straight in. Um, I'll show you a couple of little tweaks that I like to do. You know, we could add some plugins to it, all free within GarageBand, um, and kind of go through the whole process. Let's get stuck in. Okay, guys. Um, so we've got uh, the electric guitar out now, and I've showed you how to take the signal in. Okay, and this is what happens when we open up GarageBand. Empty project. Come down here. Choose. Uh, make sure that your mic input matches up with your cable. So I know that I want to record from input one, which is uh, the cable that's on the cab. Hit create. I've already balanced this out before. I to speed things up to try and keep this as compressed as possible. Um, make sure your signal's coming in. If you've got a phantom power, make sure your phantom power is selected um, on your interface and you should have signal coming in. <laughs> Okay, uh, your, your signal don't want to be peaking, but that's something for you to explore yourself. Try and keep it down here. Um, this up here is your count in. It's going to give you a four count in, and this is your metronome. Okay, and I'm going back to what I said about earlier about having your um, time right. I've already done this previously. I found out that this little loop I'm going to make is 88 beats per minute. So I'll take it down to 88. Uh, 
like that. And let's just have a listen how that sounds. Three, four. So that's right with what I want. As I said, I had tested this before. Um, so what you can do is you play along to this, all right? You play along and use that as your click track. Um, you can either have that coming into your headphones there, or it can, you know, it can come out your studio monitors, whichever way you have it set up. It doesn't really matter. If you're coming out your monitors, don't have it too loud, or it's going to bleed into your um, mic on the cab. Um, but I've got this all relatively quiet, so there should be no spill. Um, so what I'll do is I will have that set up. I'm armed, and the first bit will be record the guitar. So uh, let's give that a whirl. <laughs> We'll stop that there um, and then what I do is I take that back uh, if I grab the right bit I'm gonna take that back takes a little while there we go oh I get from the wrong one we want to take that back to the eight okay because it's just the way that that song is running there um, I might be a tiny bit out here. and up on the top bar we've got the loop all right so we click that and this is a loop up there that's your loop Let's take that all the way to the 8, make sure that that lines up and we'll give that a listen. Take away the click if you want. They're quite a weak signal at the minute, quite clean, but um, I'll show you a couple of tricks with that in a minute. No, that's working. Okay. So now we know that's working. Um, the next step would be for me. What I do now is I, I, I want to add some drums to that. Oh, sorry. No, let's 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 beef that up. So we've got the track here. Come down to where it says plugins. Okay. Um, channel EQ. So let's actually let's keep that playing. And now we want to find guitar. A couple of things. Guitar sweetener. Classic guitar impro improver is usually a pretty good one. Kind of brightens things up. So if you've got a bright sound, it doesn't work. Um, that's taking it down a bit, but got rid of the top end. We'll stick with clean up guitar, actually. Compressor, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, because we'll compress it at the end. Um, but let's just try um, platinum guitar emphasis. So before, after. Right, we got quite a nice solid signal now. Now I'll come down to here, I'll click this, and I'll find stereo spread. There we go. It's sounding nice and full now. Also, don't worry about the peaking too much here just now, okay? Um, but we've got it, we've got it sounding pretty damn nice. definitely work with that okay so now what we'll come is we'll find a track new track and we want to add the drummer so it's going to add a drum that automatically plays along with your song might take a little minute <clears throat> excuse me um, right so let's see how this is just one that's loaded up itself and let's see what it's like pretty horrible okay so you could just come down here now and start choosing through them that's quite a simple beat it could work um, and when I've got that far I usually kind of just play
And if it feels good, it usually is good. Okay, so it's, it's okay. Um, we could probably look a little bit out further. So that was, I'll make a note of that. That's Parker, 60s songwriter, reel to reel. Um, and it's okay, it's okay. But we can definitely do better. So I'll move, I'll, I'll go and select a, a different kind of feel. Um, we'll, go, we'll go R and B. And we'll choose Curtis. And this goes back to the importance of what I said about getting your BPM right, okay? As soon as you've got your plane to your, your click track right, everything else is easy. Um, that's quite nice, actually. lost in that easy straight away I kind of like that um, just because it came in and worked so again you can add a lot of stuff you could you could you could add another drummer and just add some uh, percussion let's try that actually um, so I'll go track new track let's add another drummer create and then um, I will change him to percussion and let's get some Latin percussion in it, perhaps. Okay. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. It's all experimentation. You really got to work with it yourself. And, and that's the beauty of it, kind of songwriting on your own, yeah? Um, my computer is about 100 years old, so it's a little slow. Uh, let's see what this comes up with. That really didn't work. Take the triangle out. That's sounding nice now, okay? Next step is the bass. Um, and then you'll come down here, you'll go, so it's just found it, you go track, new track, and then get your MIDI controller, create. Okay, so now I've got to make sure that I'm going to find bass. I'm going to find a bass over here. And then, and then you've got to experiment, okay? Maybe take out the percussion. Oh, if you see the percussion's actually feeling quite nice. And then that's kind of close. So I would go, this is a real quick one, by the way. I'd go track, new track, uh, sorry, track, show, master track. And we want to master it all now. Come down here. Get back to the start, play, and just start playing around, okay? Channel EQ. So I like the sound of ballad. So we'll have that. And as a compressor,
Again, you've got to experiment. Um, but I like analog tape. And we have a track. Then what I do, I've got my loop up here, I'll grab it all, and you can, on the, on the ones that you've recorded, you can just extend them, make sure you turn your loop off, and just grab these and extend, as long as you want to go, uh, you've got to make sure up here as well, weirdly, on mine, I don't know if this is on everyone's, that's got to be right to the end, as far as you want to go, then you come here, grab it, take it as long as you want to take it. Make sure it matches up. See how long that is. You can change that up here. Just go to time. Uh, that's that is three minutes. So I can do the same here. Take that up. You know, it's one of those tracks. You might just it's repetitive. So three minutes might not be long enough. It might be too long. It's down to you again. Um, how long you want to make them. Uh, and we're almost there now. I mean, this is really, really kind of barbaric. You know, there is a, there will be a lot more put into it, um, and this is probably taking way too long than it should. Then I get that. Okay, uh, that's pretty close. All not matching up, but there you go. I'll go file. Uh, sorry, share, export the song to disc, and jam track. If I can type, track, walk through, and export. And that will export that to the disk, then I've got it there and I can do what I want. That's the actual MP3 will be out, but not the project. If you want to save the project, you've got to do it different. So, um, I hope that's really helped. Uh, if there's any questions, make sure to let me know below. Um, experiment with your plugins, because that will make things sound just a little bit better. And um, and there's so much more fun you can have with this. You know, you can kind of start creating, start seeing. It actually improves your guitar playing as well because you've got to start seeing relationships between uh, the chords that you play into what you're going to play underneath. So it's kind of eye-opening in a lot of ways, okay? This is Richie from Fret Junkies. I really appreciate you being here. Take care and I'll see you soon. Peace.